Good morning everyone, welcome to Tamer Up Studio. Today we're doing our regular live stream. I will be painting a cute fluffy dog that you can see on your screen. Not a super great photo, but uh, I'll have to use my imagination to improve it. And I'm using black watercolor paper. Because the dog is white, I thought the contrast will be really good to work with. Uh, and I'm using gouache, which I will be doing uh, I will water it down in some places to do like a wash and in other places I will apply it more thickly to get like more impasto effect and we'll see how it turns out. So let's get started. I already sketched out my drawing with a white pencil. It's the Rent Inktense brand. It came with a set and um, you know regular pencil won't work on black papers so that's why I'm using white and another benefit that I'm getting is that I can kind of um, apply the pencil with a little more pressure in the spots where I'm going to have white so I already have a beginning of tonal relationships on my page which is extremely important I can see what's going to be lighter what's going to be darker so first thing I need to do is establish my midtone because I already have my lights and darks on paper um, so I didn't squeeze the gouache out yet, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a couple piles of white because I will need a lot of it. And usually when you start mixing, white gets all muddled up. So I don't want that to happen. Probably need some yellow. I'm going to apply a little bit of red. My reference photo has a lot of red in it, so I think it will be easier for my brain to... Um, work with a red even though I'm not doing I'm not copying the picture and no extent except for the dog I will definitely need some blue because I will be mixing blue with um, yellow for my leaves and stems I, I forgot this yellow I will put it somewhere next to my red and I think that's enough for now. And if I need some more, I can always squeeze it out. So I'm using a flat brush. It's easier to start with, you know, a little more surface for my brush strokes. And I'm going to work on the mid-tones. I'm trying to make a decision where I want to go with my mid-tones. So I think some blues will be a good start. And the beauty of gouache that you can always make changes. So it's not like watercolor where you need to plan everything in advance and just, you know, go for it. And this paper, it's pretty textured. So I'm, I have to use a little bit of water for my wash and I will show you I hope it works what I want to do with the with my brush strokes so I'll just show, start um, on this section I will try my final effect that I'm trying to achieve and we will see if it works so so this is the tonal range that I'm going to get. Yeah, it actually looks good. I shouldn't leave, <clears throat> shouldn't leave brushes in water. It's really a bad habit because it distorts the fibers. Okay, yes, yeah, so this works for my mid-range. And I have to carefully work around the blacks. Usually we save white, but in this case, I'm going to save blacks. That's the color of my paper. And I feel like I need to neutralize that blue a little bit. I didn't squeeze any on, but I'm going to put some ochre on my yellow ochre on my palette. And let's mix it with 
Yeah, that's much better color for midterm. Not quite so blue. So this will be the case. It's going to look like a gas mask <laughs> for a while until I get everything in place, but let's not be scared. And I'm thinking, go to the chest. And see, I'm thinking if I let the paper shine through like here to make this darker maybe i can lift some of the paper and and get some uh show the form on the face so i'm going to combine and i think that actually shows her fluffiness at the same time and let's try to do this on the ears and see if it works here. This live stream will probably take a while, but I might have to take it off the live stream and edit the final video so check back in and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you will see all my videos and I often can't post the final result right away because you know I have to wait for it to dry and stuff like that but if you're curious to see the final result subscribe to the channel and also follow me on social media because that way you will see everything I do I post regularly Yeah, I really like this soft effect and I need to make sure I preserve it throughout the painting. She has this cute fluff on top of her head. And we can drag this out a little bit to make it fluffier. Okay, so we got our technique figured out. Now we just need to... And here I applied it thinner, but it's hard to control the thickness of your wash with gouache right away so we can always come back and correct which is good for us we want to be able to correct so her eyes and a little bit on her face here she has a lighter shade under the eye Okay, and we just need to do the body. There's a darker spot here. I always end up with like a million brushes in my hand. Still need to fluff out the fur. So almost dry brush. You saw I wiped it on the on my paper towel. Legs. It's pretty dark underneath, so I'm gonna just lightly shade it there. And you could probably do like all one tone and then go over and do, you know, lighten it or darken it. But I just like to see at least in one spot the final result so I know what I'm working towards. There's a folds here. Probably need to cover this a little bit better. Not too thickly. Darker shade on her chest. And there will be a darker shade down here, but I need to show her hind legs. The hint that there is something here and there is her other leg 
and the the back of her is very light so i'm just gonna grab some pure white and start applying that where it needs to go this ear is very fluffy so light brush strokes to show the hair and this is still wet so it's nice it kind of blends in i can blend in my strokes you usually have to work pretty quickly with watercolor but with gouache too if you want to get that blending effect you need to kind of get the move on And I think adding this pure white shows us that the dog is actually white because if she was all blue, you know, it would be a little strange. So we do want to show the actual color, at least in some spots. Maybe not as much as I'm doing, but you know, somewhere. And there is, she's kind of backlit, so there will be highlight here. Fingers are our best tool. And there is a backlight here. It shows her form that she has those kind of folds on the body. And there is a highlight on this foot. Let's me show the form much better. And highlight on this leg. the form and backlight on this leg and this side of her is very well lit and I need to blend the ear because the tip of the ear is dark so I need to take paint out you know normally I would add paint but in this case I need to take it out Getting a lot of bleed from the white. Okay, so we got this darker. Now the ear is separated. Still want to have some brush strokes. So put this in. Okay, and blend this out. I feel like I need a bit of purple for the folds on the fur. Not super dark, but like under her chin, she has a little darker fold to make on the chest. It's always good to use, you know, vary your tone a little bit. Not, not super huge number of colors but no few okay the chest and there is a darker spot here kind of dark mid-tone blend it out I feel like her haunches need a little more work I want to dry brush a little bit there spot and maybe a little more balance it on this side with more white more than she actually has maybe run it down here and there's a very bright highlight here as gouache dries it kind of changes color it whitens out a little bit so because it has chalk but um, so you need to adjust the, the tonal relationship sometimes. I don't like this, so I'm going to paint with my paper towel. I'm gonna kind of smooth it out. Okay. 
need to do the dark line here. That's what I need. Okay, now she has the form. I think the ears need to be even darker, like the inside where they're folded. And this one as well. Clean spot on the towel. Okay, now the ears have form. We come down here. This is all looking good. And I think the dog is done. So all we need to do, well, I do need to work on her eyes a bit. I leave that to the last. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna add a couple of highlights and see how that looks. There are no highlights on, on her face, so I'll have to invent something and maybe give her eyelids and also give her a little highlight on the nose and just hint at the nostrils and her lips are black but her chin is white and she has some just give her some hairs maybe do fine hairs here okay and maybe a few hairs around the nose I'm sure she has some can kind of see them in this photo. Maybe restate these things. Okay, and some more fluff. Her hair is kind of tricky to paint because it's um, curly. So we need to kind of follow the form and not make her look like a Maltese, you know, because she's a poodle. It's a tiny little highlight in there, which helps me to describe the form. dog is down so all I need to do is uh, paint the flowers and I obviously don't have flowers in the painting in the reference photo but I'm gonna just invent something I'm gonna start with some pink color here to kind of follow what I have in the I'm just kind of sticking with the color palette from the reference photo, but I'm not obviously following the reference photo exactly. Okay, the trickiest part will be to connect the dog with the background. But I think like a little dark will be good because that will separate them. I don't want her to be like flowers stuck to her. And a little bit of black veins on the flowers will also help because, you know, there are shadows between the petals. Okay. Is that? Let's do like a... I guess they're vaguely roses. <laughs> so I'm gonna do like a couple of buds here. Just working from my imagination, you know. This is now what I call the design stage because, you know, I could have painted just the dog, but it will look 
strange if she was just alone on the page. Um, so you don't need some sort of a background. You can do solid color like a wash with very like slight color variations. Um, I chose to do some flowers and I'm out of red so I need more red paint. But there are options and it's your decision as the artist to figure out what works for your painting. Some people, you know, they paint something and they're like, I don't know what to do with it. Well, try different things and see what works. Nobody knows how to do it, you know. <laughs> there are some principles we follow, but it's actually very subjective. Okay, I think I had one more sketched over here. Let's put it in real quick. Kind of run it off the page. Okay. I really like, I never use flat brushes for watercolor, but they work great for gouache because they hold a lot of paint and not too much water. All right, and um, all we have left to do is some um, leaves and stems so let's put this in real quick i'm gonna go with the same make sure wow this is green let's see how uh, ochre will work maybe better instead of yellow oh, i did like that hold on let's do another try yeah, kind of a little darker shade, maybe a little bit of white. And just fantasy brushwork. Just completing my design, filling in spaces. Kind of tying everything together. Giving some visual interest to the artwork. something on this side. The trick is to lead the viewer's eye around the painting and um, keep the eye in the painting. And I struggled to understand this for a long time, but you know, after you paint for a while, you kind of start to see it. It's more it's intuitive thing more than anything. I mean, I can tell you don't do like bright colors on the sides of the painting, but you can to a certain extent. So just try different things and figure out what, what leads the eye around and what keeps it in the painting. Okay, um, I think we're pretty much done. I'm gonna add maybe a couple more leaves up here. Don't want them to be that color. Maybe make them lighter. And maybe I'll add a few highlights on the leaves just for added interest. Whiter mixture. Yeah, gosh, it's very juicy when you put it on, but then it kind of dulls down, whitens out. So, because of chalk in it, so you need to adjust your tonal values after you've applied it. So, 
So I want the dog to be part of the painting. Round this off, round this off. Okay, and I think the painting is done. I am going to sign it with my flat brush. Try to incorporate my signature into the design. Here we are. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on Friday. I will probably do some figure sketching. If you're interested, please watch and subscribe to Tamir Up Studio YouTube channel. I post regularly and I do live streams regularly and hopefully we can create and learn together and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.